Hello there. Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Sarah Wooten, and I am a small animal veterinarian, and I am a feline veterinarian, and I am here today in this video at this very moment to talk to you about chronic kidney disease in cats. So this video is designed to give you a broad overview of chronic kidney disease in cats, what you as a pet parent need to know, and steps you can take to protect your cat, and what to do if your cat develops this condition. We've got a lot of material here to cover, but the more you know about this particular condition, the more educated you will be and the more informed you can be about your decisions with your cats. So let's get to it. So as we know, kidneys are important for life support. They are life support structures that live in your body. And cats and people, and all other mammals for that matter, need healthy kidneys to survive. There's two of them, and they are located um, on either side of your spine, about halfway down near, near your lower back, right? Same place in cats, right? And they do several important things, including filtering waste products from the blood making urine, maintaining healthy electrolyte, vitamin and mineral levels, maintaining blood pressure and conserving water. Without healthy kidneys, toxins and waste products build up into the blood, causing a variety of health problems. And also animals become very dehydrated very quickly. You cannot live without healthy kidneys. So while there are several diseases that can affect feline kidneys, chronic kidney disease or CKD for short is by far the most common kidney condition seen in cats seven years of age and older. Though it can happen in any age of cat, honestly. Uh, it happens when something causes enough irreversible damage to the kidneys that it impairs their ability to do their jobs. The saddest thing about CKD, chronic kidney disease, is that we don't know what causes it in most cats. Vets, we just, we don't know, right? Um, other than chronic nonspecific inflammation, which could be due to anything. Um, bacterial infections, viral infections, trauma to the kidneys, uh, inflammation in the filters of the kidneys, which is called glomerular nephritis, <laughs> um, exposures to toxins, tumors, polycystic kidney disease, which is a birth defect. All of these things are known to cause chronic kidney disease, but many times there is no specific cause. And a cat will develop chronic kidney problems without any apparent underlying cause that we know at least at the time of making this video. The tricky part about CKD is that the symptoms, they develop slowly, gradually over time and to start they're very subtle. And by the time most pet parents notice an issue in their cats, the disease is advanced in state and there's not much we can do about it. It's estimated that cats have to have over 75% of their kidney function impacted. So 75% of the little filters in the kidney have to shut down before that cat shows any symptoms whatsoever. So unfortunately, by the time a cat is showing symptoms, damage has been done. The first signs of CKD in most cats are pretty classic, okay? They include drinking a lot, peeing a lot, and loss, weight loss, sometimes loss of appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, things like that. And so these cats will start to empty their water bowl a lot more often. So you'll look over there and the bowl will be empty. You'll be like, what the heck? Sometimes you may not know if your cat has an automatic waterer or drinks out of a fountain. The, so the other cardinal sign is that they start making literal lakes in their litter box. I mean, the pea spots that normally used to be this big become like that big. So that's the other side. And the reason why these cats drink more is because as their kidney filters shut down, they lose the ability to concentrate their urine. 
and that causes them to drink more, but they can never catch up. So these cats are in a chronic state of some level of dehydration, even if they're drinking a lot of water. That one's kind of paradoxical, hard to understand, but it's because the water goes in and goes right back out. Other signs of chronic kidney disease have to do with uh, the toxins that build up in the blood because the kidney isn't filtering them anymore. And those signs include things like weakness, excessively tired, dull hair coat, not grooming as much, maybe they're matting, vomiting or other gastrointestinal abnormalities, bad breath from oral ulcers. Cats can actually get ulcers in their mouth from the toxins that build up, pale gums, dry gums, skin that when you um, pull it up, it just kind of stays tented up. That's a cardinal sign of dehydration. And some cats may even go suddenly blind from high blood pressure because it causes retinal detachment. So the back of the eye becomes detached and they go blind all of a sudden. So if you are noticing these signs, your cat needs veterinary attention as soon as possible. CKD is usually diagnosed by a combination of several things. History from you, right? You say the cat's drinking a lot, peeing a lot, doctor, right? Then the doctor does a physical examination, and then they do some laboratory testing on both blood and urine. In some cases, an abdominal ultrasound or maybe an x-ray may be indicated or ordered. Here's some good news. <laughs> I feel like I'm giving you a bunch of bad news, but here's some good news. In recent years, in like the last 10 years or so, there is a new blood test called SDMA. And that is a test that is very a lot more sensitive to catching kidney failure, kidney issues, kidney problems sooner, which allows cats to receive the care that they need sooner. Because remember, cats don't show signs until like 75% of their kidneys have shut down. So SDMA allows us to catch these cats when maybe 20% of their kidneys has shut down. That's a big difference in a lot, uh, long-term prognosis. So if, you're, uh, if your veterinarian mentions SDMA, or recommends it as maybe annual monitoring or biannual monitoring to make keep an eye on your cat's kidney function, it's a good idea, right? It's very sensitive, allows us to make changes very easily and quickly and early. Unfortunately, my friends, there is no cure for kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, unless your cat has a kidney transplant. Yes, that is a thing. Um, and kidney transplants do happen. They come with their own set of challenges. Any cat that receives a kidney transplant has to be on immunosuppressive drugs so their body does not reject the transplant. And also those cats um, require, often they require dialysis beforehand and you have, to, you have to adopt the donor cat as well. And those procedures are only performed in a couple different places, but it is an option out there. Last time I checked these kidney transplants, they usually just transplant one, anywhere from 15 to $20,000 out of pocket. Oh, very expensive, right? So most times, most people don't elect to do a kidney transplant. Most people don't even elect to do dialysis because dialysis itself can be very pricey. And that can be out of a lot of people's um, availability to pay, which is, by the way, one other reason why pet insurance is so helpful. So that's my quick plug about pet insurance. But most of the time, cats and chronic kidney disease, veterinary care is aimed at managing the symptoms and slowing the progression if possible. So each cat is different, right? Each cat requires different things. They manifest different problems. So their treatments will be a little different. Medications, therapeutic foods that restrict protein or a highly digestible protein and fluid therapy to maintain hydration to dehydrated cats and reduce the toxins and manage other symptoms. Um, also medications to manage uh, oral ulcers, appetite, nausea, high blood pressure. Those are kind of some of the tools that we use to manage this. 
Um, in some cases, cats require dialysis because even with doing the fluid therapy, they can't bring down the toxin level. And so those cats do require dialysis in order to bring the toxin level down. Those are usually pretty severe cases. Not all cats need the same thing. So it's important to work closely with a veterinarian that you trust to give your cat the best quality of life, right? So while CKD can be a very frustrating condition, the good news is there are so many tools available to help your cat. And advances in science are made every single day that give us greater understanding as to the etiology of this disease, and helps us develop new ways to help cats who have this issue. The other good news is that cats can often live many, many years, even with chronic kidney disease. Cats can adapt to this fairly well. And they, I have maintained cats for years and years and years, even though they had 75% of their kidney function was gone. Again, when it comes to treatments, your main treatments that you will hear your veterinarian recommend, recommending for most of these cats include making sure that the food that you are feeding this cat is helpful and not harmful. So most cats in the past, we used to diagnose any kind of kidney insufficiency, kidney problem and go, oh, put them on restricted protein right away. So that's no longer the case. Now there's very various stages of kidney disease and each stage requires different therapy. And the earlier stages don't really need restricted protein, especially because we have to understand that these cats are obligate carnivores. And so they need to eat protein to maintain their muscle mass, but they do need high digestible, high quality protein. So if you are talking to your veterinarian about this, maybe you don't need to go on a kidney diet quite yet. Maybe it's maybe you're in the early, early stages. Maybe you just need a high quality senior diet. The other thing that is a can be a challenge for people is learning to do what we call subcutaneous fluids at home. So many cats can be maintained with giving them fluids under their skin via a needle. One of the main problems with these cats is that they are dehydrated and cannot remove the toxins. So by giving them fluids under their skin, you help rehydrate them and you provide support to all their internal organs and you help remove flush those toxins out. Typically we do, uh, we do subcutaneous fluids uh, in between the shoulder blades on the back. So I always joke with my pet parents and I say, we're gonna train your cat into a camel, right? And so we put fluids under the skin, a certain amount, and your veterinarian teaches you how to do that and how much to give. And then what you'll notice is after you give your cat those fluids, then your cat's a little camel with a little hump of water on their back. And then as the day goes by, gravity, it goes to the front and then they look like they have boobs. <laughs> so that is often a thing. And a lot of pet parents feel very intimidated by that. But I have to tell you, most cats tolerate it very well and they are good little kitties and they receive their treatment. Also, there could be things like medications for oral ulcers or high blood pressure. And it can be challenging to give your cat pills. Some cats are great about pills, other cats not so much. So if that is a concern that you have about your cat and your cat's been diagnosed with CKD and now you're sitting and looking at all these medications, well, there are different ways to get medications into cats, lots of different ways. And there's lots of fun ways that don't involve you sticking your finger down your cat's throat, including having it formulated into a treat, a chew, a tasty liquid, a transdermal lotion that you rub on. So many options, right? So talk to your vet. Lastly, one of the challenging things with these chronic kidney disease cats is they don't feel so well and their appetite is, they don't eat enough. And that is a problem in itself because cats have to eat or they'll get sick. Furthermore, they're already feeling sick and then you throw new food at them that may not taste as good as their old food because it doesn't have as much sodium or protein in it. So it can be challenging to be able to get these cats to eat the food that they need, which is why it's so helpful to know that there's any issues with the kidneys 
before they have symptoms, because before they feel bad, you are more likely to be successful in transitioning them to a new food as long as they're not feeling bad. If they're feeling bad and you want to put them on a new food, good luck with that, right? We can also prescribe appetite stimulants to help increase their appetite. Also, it used to be that the only kidney food out there was Hills KD. Fabulous food, don't have any issues with it, but not all cats like it. Now there are several different foods from several different manufacturers. There are dry foods, there are canned foods. I recommend a combination of both. They come in pâtés and stews in different flavors. So there's lots of different things and most veterinarians have a whole shelf full of kidney samples that they can send you home with. So you can decide and work with your cat to see what is best. But it is important that if your cat needs to go on a therapeutic food for kidney disease, that you get them eating it. So work with your vet. If it's not working out, go back to your vet, tell your vet, get them to help you because dietary therapy is very important as well. So that's all I have to say on kidney disease. While it can be frustrating, remember, there are so many cats that live for a long, long, long time and live really well, even with kidney problems. And don't forget that we as veterinarians are also increasing our knowledge every single day. So with the right support, even if your cat has this condition, they can live for a long time. So feel hopeful, don't feel discouraged and utilize, lean on your local vet for all of their expertise that they can give you. Thank you so much for watching. If you have found this video to be helpful, please let me know in the comments. If there's something else you would like to have covered, please let me know in the comments and I will be back soon with another video on feline healthcare topics to help you care for your pet in the best way possible. Thank you so much. See you later.